before we talk about the prothrombin time and the partial thromboplastin time, we are going to talk about just real quick review a couple steps in this in the coagulation cascade. And we talked about this in the last video, but there are a few um, steps here that require calcium. And this, these steps, the ones that involve calcium, have to be on a phospholipid surface, usually platelet. This, usually this process happens on the platelets. But, so, so to kind of go through this, you see that, you know, there's this cofactor here that's embedded in the um, phospholipid membrane, also the cofactor here, and there's a substrate, a substrate and an enzyme. <clears throat> you know, there's a, there's an activated enzyme and then there's a substrate here. Well, these combined inside this cofactor and the calcium the calcium here kind of holds these two together to make this reaction happen. And then, you know, this, you know, factor X then gets converted and changes, you know, makes a conformational change, and now it becomes an activated factor X. And calcium continues to kind of bind on this surface. And you can kind of see that calcium is a crucial part of this, of this, um, of this process here and so is the phospholipid surface. So that kind of brings us into the partial thromboplastin time and the th prothrombin time. And these are labs that physicians sometimes will order is the PT and the PTT to kind of um, you know, evaluate or analyze those pathways. So if you want to have a good sense of what's going on in the ex extrinsic pathway, and to remind you that this is the extrinsic path, extrinsic pathway is there's a tissue damage of some sort in the, um, you know, vascular system, and then this tissue factor is secreted by these endothelial cells, or it's actually you know, a flag, if you will, is kind of, you know, st sticks out of their membrane, that tissue factor, and then that causes the extrinsic pathway to kind of, uh, you know, start and, and begin. So if you want to examine the extrinsic pathway and the common, both examine, examine the common, but the prothrombin time specifically examines the extrinsic pathway and then the common pathway, and it examines factors 7, 10, 2, 5, and fibrinogen. And what happens is they take, you know, someone will draw your blood, and they'll put it in a tube, and then they'll spin it down. You know, and then you'll have, you know, all your red blood cells down here, and then you'll have your plasma here. And what happens is they put, they, they put it, they put this, they take this plasma out. Plasma. They'll take out the, your plasma out of, you know, this tube that they got, and they'll treat it with sodium citrate. Okay, what sodium citrate does is it chelates any calcium inside your plasma that, that prevents spontaneous clotting. Because remember that these pathways right here, this one and this one, for example, in the extrins, it will require calcium. So what they do is they, they treat it with sodium citrate, takes out the calcium, and then what they'll add, so then they'll put it in, you know, another tube, I'll put the plasma in this tube, and then they'll add phospholipids and tissue factor. So they'll, you know, they're kind of like a baking a cake, you know, you're adding all these ingredients. So they'll take this plasma, they'll dump it in this little tube here, you know, let's say it's this much. They'll add phospholipids and they'll add tissue factor because remember that you need, you know, this, this pathway here. Oops this pathway needs to be on a phospholipid surface and then they'll also add this tissue factor here because you need that you know and then they'll add they'll add those into into this mix they'll stir it all up and then the final ingredient is they'll take they'll take calcium and then they'll dump it in 
And when they do that, they start they start a timer. And then they time, you know, one second, two seconds. You know, they'll see how long it takes for a blood clot to form. So blood clot. So they're going to see how long that blood clot is um, to, to form. And they usually say it's 11 to 13 seconds. That's how long it takes usually for this blood clot to form. And this is prothrombin time. Along with prothrombin, so once they get this result, once they get this, um, this result, then they do something funny with the numbers. And then they'll do this calculation using the international normalized ratio or the INR. And what they'll do is they'll take this time, so they'll take the PT, <clears throat> the prothrombin time of the patient, and then they'll divide it by the prothrombin time of uh, standard or a group of patients, so the, the average of a group of patients. And they'll, they'll do this math, and this will spit out a number. And so you can see that if this, like let's say they do this math and this comes out as a 5. Well, if you just put a 1 under here, well then the patient's prothrombin time is 5 times greater than the standard patient. So if the, if the INR is 5, well then this coagulation pathway is really, really, really slow. So what does that mean? If you have a, a high uh, INR, then you're going to have then that means increased bleeding because if you just think about it if the patient has a five well then this is really really slow and so if you get cut this extrinsic pathway is going to take a long time to stop that cut from bleeding on the other hand if you have you know so let's say this is the example of a five on the other hand if you have a very low, so let's say 0 0.05, well then this pathway is very quick. And so the chance of bleeding out is very, 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 very low. So if you have a low INR, then you have decreased bleeding, which then it promotes, you know, you're going to get blood clots in your veins or, or in your arteries or veins or in your cardiovascular system really quickly and that's not good either you know because then you're gonna have blood clots forming uh, in normal physiology and then you're gonna you know we'll talk about why blood clots and what happens with blood clots in uh, in a minute so the normal range for a healthy person is 0 0.9 0 0.9 to 1.3 that's the normal kind of average for a person average for someone that's on Coumadin it's two to three so if a, if you're a patient that's on Coumadin and the doctor will order this uh, prothrombin time test the number should be between two and three and that means that the level of Coumadin the dosage that the patient is on is a, is, is a pretty good one so that explains a little bit about prothrombin time so let's move down here and talk about partial thromboplastin time, or the PPT. This one measures the extrinsic pathway, or factors 12, 11, 9, 8, 10, 5, 2, and fibrinogen. And you can see that you know a lot of these are the same. You know from from this one here to uh, the PT time, which is up here, a lot of them is the same. Why? Is because both of these tests are measuring this this common pathway here. So this partial thromboplastin time, what happens in this one? Well, the the same thing is is you have a tube here. You know, someone you go into a phlebotomist. You know, some kind of lab. The phlebotomist will usually the phlebotomist will draw your blood. They'll spin it down. And they'll, you know, the RBCs will be packed down here, and then they'll take this right here, and this is this is the plasma, you know, kind of the more liquidy part of your blood, and they'll take this out, plasma, 
They'll dump it in a in some kind of beaker or some kind of tube, test tube, you know. So then this is your plasma here. Then they'll add, in, they'll chelate it, you know, that with sodium citrate. There's kind of the same process up here, you know, the sodium citrate. They're going to take out all the calcium. They're going to add phospholipids. And remember that you you're going to need this phospholipid surface to to complete this pathway. And instead of tissue factor, like in the case of uh, the PT time, you need this tissue factor because remember if you come over come over to here and you look at these pathways, in the extrinsic pathway you need a tissue factor and tissue damage. In the intrinsic pathway you just need some kind of surface content. So what they do is they actually put ground glass. So they put ground glass inside here with this phospholipids they mix it all up and then they start at adding calcium they start adding calcium in here and then the calcium then they're going to start they start they're going to start the timer when they start adding this calcium to kind of see how long it takes for a blood clot to form and usually it takes 28 to 35 seconds 28 to 35 seconds for normal partial thromboplastin time, or this PTT. And in the case of the partial thromboplastin times, doctors will order it if you're on heparin, the drug heparin. And then, you know, they want to monitor how, how your heparin is doing, so they'll order, order the partial thromboplastin time. And if you're on Coumadin, they'll usually order the PT, the uh, the first one that we talked about, the prothrombin time here. And in this case, there's no INR. You know, they don't do any fancy math. They just look at the number and they can kind of see. So again, the same, the same principles apply. If this is a fast process, you know, if it's like a 10 second, let's do an example, 10 second, if it takes 10 seconds for your a blood clot to form, that's a pretty quick, that's a pretty quick um, uh, r rate there. And so you're gonna you're gonna be at, this this is bad. You're because you're gonna increase thrombus formation. So you're gonna have blood clots walking down the street, you know, being doing normal things, you're going to have start blood clots forming and that's going to that's going to be bad because then that blood clot inside your your artery or your vein it can it start can clog things up. Again, if this is, you know, let's do another example. If it's 50 for example, 50 seconds, well what does that mean? It means that you are at a high risk for bleeding. Again, that's bad. So if you're outside of this normal reference range, just think about it. If you have a low um, partial thromboplastin time, you're gonna in, you're just gonna increase your chances of clotting. And if you're out, if you're too high, then you're not gonna co coagulate. Your blood's not gonna coagulate. You're not gonna form a blood clot in time for uh, you know bleeding to stop or whatever. So I hope that kind of gives you a good intuition about the pro partial thromboplastin time or the PPT. Some people also have the APPT. That's another name for it. It's an activated partial thromboplastin time. This is the same test or the same concept. And the prothrombin time, the PT, and, uh, and also the international normalized ratio. And that's the prothrombin time of the patient divided by the prothrombin uh, time of kind of a standard, a group of individuals, their mean, their average, and then you divide the two and that gives you the INR number. All right, we'll see you in the next video.